All right, so the next session under the descriptive mark of chains that we want to consider is the stationary and limiting distributions, okay? So the thing stationary distribution means that the probability of finding the process in any state, say J, after a large number of transitions, tends to some value which is independent of the initial probability distribution of the mark of chain, okay? So that says uh, we would like to know the proportion of times that the mark of chain spends in each state as the number of transitions becomes very large, okay? So it is important to note that if the Markov chain has a stationary distribution, it does not mean that the Markov chain settles down into one state, okay? On the contrary, the Markov chain may continue to make transitions from one state to another, right? So stationary distribution is also known as steady state distribution or equilibrium distribution or limiting distribution. Now, the term limiting distribution is used here because sometimes we take the limit of the n step transition probability matrix. So instead of using stationary, we try to use limiting. Okay. Now, um, in the case where we don't take the limit, then that becomes a steady state or equilibrium distribution, right? Okay. So let's consider this remark. If a Markov chain has a finite number of states, then there exists at least one stationary probability distribution. So uh, we will be looking at other uniqueness conditions with regards to stationary and limiting distribution in our subsequent tutorials. Okay, but take note of this remark. So now let's take a look at the methods for finding stationary distributions. So method one, the first method is to find the n-step transition probability matrix and then take the limit of the n-step transition probability matrix as the number of transition becomes very large, okay? So this is why uh, I indicated that sometimes when we try to take the limit of the n-step instead of using stationary, we try to use limiting distribution even though they have the same group or, or they have the same idea, okay? So let's take a look at um, an example of this. Find the stationary distribution for the discrete time of chain with the n step transition probability matrix defined below, okay? So um, we already know this from our previous tutorial. So how do we get the stationary distribution for all this um, n step transition probability matrix? So um, we know that since the limit of this will be approaching zero, it follows that the limit, right, or the probability that you are going to visit state one as the number of transition becomes very large will approach or converge to this. And also the probability that you are going to visit state two as the number of transition becomes very large will also converge to that, okay? So this is basically what we mean. Once you take the limit on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, you realize that this side will be approaching zero, okay? So once you multiply zero by this, you also get zero. So you'll be left with this. So once you multiply this by that, you get beta. So this is the transition from state one to itself, which is going to be beta divided by alpha plus beta. If you multiply this by this, we have the transition from state one to state two. So we have alpha divided by alpha plus beta, okay? And this is transition from state two to state one. So once you multiply, you have beta divided by alpha plus beta. And this will be transition from state two to state two. Okay, state two is here. So from state two to state two. So once you multiply, you have alpha divided by alpha plus beta, okay? So that's the reason why um, we have this result. So the limit as n becomes very large, the probability that we're going to invest state one will converge to that. And also as the number of transition becomes large, the probability that we're going to invest state two also converge to that, okay? So um, you realize that um, this method of finding a limiting or station distribution is useful only when you have an eigenvalue representation of the n step transition probability matrix, okay? But you know, finding the eigenvalue representation of the n step transition probability matrix may be difficult to deal with, especially when the number of states become very large, okay? So there is an alternative method that we can use, okay, which is going to be the method two. And you can obtain this using the following theorem, okay? So with the second method, it states that let this process be a Markov chain with state space, which is finite, and one step transition probability matrix defined here. So the limiting distribution of this process, if it exists, 
is the unique non-negative root of the following equations. That is question one, equation two, where equation one can also be expressed as defined in equation three, okay? So equation one and equation three can be interpreted as, um, let's say, as the number of transition become very large, if the product of the proportion of time that um, the chain spends in each state by the transition probability matrix is the same as the proportion of times that the chain spends in each state, then we have an equilibrium or stationary distribution such that the sum of the proportion of times that the Markov chain spends in each state will be equal to one, okay? So this is the second approach, and this is useful when you don't have an eigenvalue representation of the end-state transition probability matrix, okay? So let's take a look at an example. From our previous example, we considered a two-state discrete time Markov chain as a model for rainfall in a certain town. The one-step transition probability matrix is defined below, where W is wet day and D is dry day, okay? So we want to find the proportion of wet days in the long run, okay? So how do we do this? Let's take a look at the solution. So the limiting distribution of the map of chain, right, is going to be defined below. So this is going to be the limiting distribution of the Markov chain where pi one is going to be the proportion of time that the Markov chain visits a wet day in the long run. Or we can say um, pi one is going to be the proportion of wet days in the long run. And pi two is going to be the proportion of dry days in the long run, okay? So where these two values are the non-negative roots of the following equations, okay? So based on equation two, we know that once we sum this, it should be equal to one. And also from equation three, we can have this expression, okay? So from equation five, we know that um, we can take the, the product of this and of that and equate it to that. So that's what we have, okay? And we can also take the product of this and the second column and equate it to pi two, okay? So that's what we're going to have. So from equation seven, we can group like terms, okay? So we can basically pick this one to the other side, which is going to give us this result, okay? So once you make pi one a subject, you obtain this. Now we want to substitute equation nine into equation four, okay? Equation nine into equation four. So once you do that, you have this, and we can then get this result once you make pi to the subject, okay? So therefore, from equation nine, we can have our pi one to be two out of three. So this basically means that in the long run, the proportion of where this is going to convert to two out of three. Okay, very simple to do. All right, so let's take a look at another example. In this yearly vacation, Mr. Zenith selects one of three places, Kansas, Sydney, and Ottawa using the following rule. So if he has been to Kansas the past year, he will choose Sydney with probability two out of three and Ottawa with probability one out of four. Yeah, if he has been to Sydney the past year, he will choose Kansas, Sydney again and Ottawa with probabilities three out of eight, one out of eight and two out of two and one out of two respectively, okay? If he has spent his vacation in Ottawa, then Kansas and Europe are equally likely to be chosen the following year, but not Ottawa. So if initially he spent his vacation in Sydney, we want to find a probability that he will spend his vacation in Ottawa after two years. And secondly, what proportion of times will he spend his vacation in Sydney in the long run, okay? So let's take a look at the solution. So let X index N denote the place Mr. Zenit spent his vacation in year N. So therefore, this process is going to be a Markov chain with state space one, which is equivalent to Kansas, one, two, two, we are denoting two to Sydney, and three to Ottawa, okay? So um, we know that this is going to be a Markov chain because um, we can have the years to be countable in finite, yes, and also our state space is um, discrete or finite, okay? And it is assumed that the um, vacation in a future state right, will depend on the current state, okay? So how do you obtain the transition probability matrix? So let's go back and take a look at the question. So using the following rule, we know that if Mr. Zenith has been to cancel the past year, he will choose Sydney with probability two out of three and Ottawa with probability one out of three, okay? So the transition from 
um, cancers to cancers will go to zero, and cancers to seed will be 23, and cancers to um, entire will be one out of three, okay? Um, so uh, let's continue. If he has been to Sydney the past year, he will choose cancers, Sydney again, and Ottawa with probability is 3 out of 8, 1 out of 8, and 2 out of, 1 out of 2 respectively, okay? So it means that the transition from Sydney to um, cancers will be 3 out of 8, Sydney to Sydney will be 1 out of 8, and Sydney to Ottawa will be 1 out of 2, okay? And finally, um, if he has spent his vacation in Ottawa, then Kansas and Europe are equally likely to be chosen the following year, but not Ottawa, okay? So um, the transition from Ottawa to Sydney and Kansas are equally likely, so it's going to be one out of two and one out of two, okay? So Ottawa to itself will be zero, okay? So this is how we obtain our transition probability metrics, all right? All right, so we to find um, this, that is, um, we to find the probability that Mr. Zenit will spend his vacation in Ottawa, right, after two years. And given that he has spent his vacation in Sydney, right, at the initial time, okay? So we can rewrite this in this form and using the idea of Chapman Kolomogorov equation, right, we know that we already have the you can get this first. So let's get a squared. So we can use a calculator to get a squared of the transition probability matrix, which is going to be of this form, right? So using the idea of chapman kolmogorov equation, we know that the first index here is corresponding to the current state two. And the second index here three is corresponding to the future state three, okay? So two and three, where they intersect, we pick that value, okay? So that's going to be 12 out of 64, which is similar to three out of 16, okay? All right, so secondly, we wish to find um, the proportion of times that Mr. Zenit will spend his vacation in Sydney in the long run, okay? So how do we get this? So using the theorem from the stationary probability distribution, we are going to have this, okay? You know that once you sum based on equation two, once you sum this, it should be equal to one. And from equation three, you can also have this expression, okay? So we can basically pick this first row, multiply by the column and equate it to pi one, that's what we have here. And we can also pick um, this row, multiply by the second column and equate it to pi two, that's what we have here. Then we can also um, pick this row, multiply by the third column and equate it to pi three, and that's what we have, okay? So I want to substitute equation 12 into equation 14. So this equation 12, right, want to substitute it into equation 14. So in place of pi one, you will replace this in place of pi one, okay? So that's what you're going to have. And once you work this one out, you obtain this, you provide them to obtain that. And you make pi to the subject, you obtain this, okay? So we want to substitute equation 15 into equation 13. You already have equation 15 to be here. You want to substitute this into equation 13. So once you do that, you obtain this, okay? Once you put like then you obtain that. Once you work out, you obtain pi one to be that, okay? So now I want to substitute equation 15 and 16 into equation 10, okay? So once you do that, you obtain this result so that once you make, um, you work this one out, you obtain this, you make pi to the subject, you obtain that, okay? So from equation 15, you can also obtain pi three to be that. And from equation 16, you can also obtain our pi one to be that, okay? So it can be deduced that the probability that after a large number of transitions, Mr. Zenit will spend his vacation in Sydney is going to be 0 0.4 or 40%, which is quite low, okay? So um, this will be the solution. And this is going to be a trial question. I'll leave the solution in the description of this video so you can check it out, please. If you find value in today's tutorial video, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.